This is part 38 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss Environment Tag Helper in ASP.NET Core with an example. At the moment, within our application, we are using Bootstrap. Now, here is what we want to do. On our local development machine, that is in the development environment, for ease of debugging, we want to load non-minified Bootstrap CSS file, that is bootstrap.css on staging, production, UAT or any other environment except the development environment, we want this application to load minified bootstrap CSS file from a CDN that is content delivery network for better performance. However, if the CDN is down or for some reason our application is not able to reach the CDN, then in that case we want this application to fall back to our own server and then load this minified bootstrap CSS file. We can achieve this very easily by using the built-in environment tag helper. Before we try and use the environment tag helper, first let's understand how we set the application environment name. We use ASP.NET Core underscore environment environment variable to set the application environment name. On our local development machine, we usually set this environment variable within launch settings.json file. You can find launch settings.json file under the properties node within Solution Explorer. Notice on my machine, we have set the ASP.NET Core environment variable to development. On a staging or production environment, we set this environment variable in the operating system. We discussed environment variables in detail in part 14 of our ASP.NET Core tutorial. ASP.NET Core Environment Tag Helper supports rendering different content depending on the application environment. Notice this example right here. We have set the include attribute of the environment tag helper to development. So basically we are saying for the development environment, render this content that is enclosed within the environment tag. And this link element is going to load the non-minified bootstrap CSS file from our own server if the environment is development. In our layout file, Instead of always loading the non-minified bootstrap CSS file, let's only do this if the environment is development. What if the environment is staging, production or UAD? Well, in that case, we want to load the minified bootstrap CSS file from a CDN for better performance. And this is one way of doing it. Notice, in this case, we have set the include attribute to staging comma production. So basically we are saying for staging or production environment, we want this content to be rendered. And this link element is loading the minified bootstrap CSS file from a CDN. We also have the integrity attribute here. We'll discuss the purpose of this attribute in just a bit. Instead of setting the include attribute to a comma separated list of environment names like this, we could also use exclude attribute. So basically with this we are saying except for development environment render this content. So on any other environment except the development environment the minified bootstrap CSS file will be loaded from the CDN. So the point that I'm trying to make is the value of include and exclude attribute can be either a single hosting environment name or a comma separate list of hosting environment names. Depending on your project requirements, you may either use the first approach or the second approach. The benefit with second approach is tomorrow if we spin up a new environment like UAT for example, we don't have to make any change right here because even for the new UAT environment, the minified bootstrap CSS file will be loaded from the CDN. Whereas if we are using the first approach, then we have to explicitly include the new environment name UAT in this comma separated list of environment names. At the moment, within our application, we are using Bootstrap 4. To get the CDN link, navigate to this website, getbootstrap.com and if we scroll down, we will find the Bootstrap CDN link right here. Let's copy this and within our application, let's include another environment tag helper and then let's set exclude attribute to development and paste the copied CDN link. So with these two instances of environment tag helper, on the development environment, the non-minified bootstrap CSS file will be loaded from our own web server and for any other environment except the development environment, that is staging, production, UAD or any other custom environment, the minified bootstrap CSS file will be loaded from this CDN. Let's save our changes and quickly test this. Reload our application web page and then view the page source. 
Notice we are loading the non-minified bootstrap CSS file from our own web server. That's because if we take a look at launch settings.json file, notice for this profile IS Express, we have set the ASP.NET Core environment variable to development. Now let's change the environment name to staging. Notice now when we reload this web page, we have the minified bootstrap CSS file loaded from this CDN. Now let's understand the use of this integrity attribute. This integrity attribute on the link element is used for sub resource integrity check or SRI for short. This minified bootstrap CSS file is loaded from a remote CDN server. What if someone has maliciously altered this file? Well, sub resource integrity SRI for short is a security feature that allows a browser to check if the file being retrieved has been maliciously altered. Let's understand how this works. Notice this integrity attribute is set to a hash value. This hash value is computed based on the content of this file. When the browser downloads this file from the CDN, it recalculates the hash value and then compares that calculated hash value with this hash value. If both of them match, then we know the file has not been altered. If they don't match, then that implies the file has been altered and the browser will block the download. To simulate someone has maliciously altered this file, I'm going to include some text here, maybe something like wrong hash. The hash values are obviously not going to match. So this means when we reload this page, notice the bootstrap styles are no longer working. That's because the bootstrap file download from the CDN is blocked. Notice the error we have on the console tab. Failed to find a value digest in the integrity attribute for this resource bootstrap.min.css. So the resource has been blocked from download. Now, another important point to understand here is if the CDN is down or for some reason our application is not able to reach the CDN or someone has maliciously altered the bootstrap file. So in all these three cases, the browser will fail to download the bootstrap file from the CDN. If the browser is not able to download the file, then our application will not work as expected on all the non-development environments like staging, production, UAT, etc. So in all these cases where our application is not able to download the bootstrap file from the CDN, we want the application to fall back to our own server and then load the minified file from our server. We can very easily achieve this by setting asp-fallback-href tag helper on the link element. Notice we have set the value of this tag helper to the minified bootstrap file on our server. In addition to the fallback href tag helper, we also need these three test tag helpers, fallback test class, fallback test property, and fallback test value. As the name imply, these tag helpers are used to test if we are successful in downloading the bootstrap file from the CDN. The way these tag helpers does that is by injecting some custom JavaScript into the browser. That JavaScript is going to check for the existence of this class, this property, and this value. If they exist, then that means the browser is successful in downloading the bootstrap file from the CDN. If they don't exist, that means the browser failed to download the bootstrap file from the CDN. So that's when this minified bootstrap file will be loaded from our fallback source. Finally, we have this suppress fallback integrity tag helper. We use this tag helper to turn off integrity check for files downloaded from a fallback source. We only need integrity check for files downloaded from a third party server like a CDN server. For a fallback server, we don't need this integrity check because usually the fallback server is our own web server and we trust the files downloaded from our own web server. So we may want to turn off this integrity check and to do that, all we have to do is set this tag helper to a value of true. If you want to turn it on, set it to a value of false or simply remove that tag helper. Now let's include all those tag helpers that we have just seen on the slides. We have the fallback href tag helper, the three fallback test tag helpers, and finally the tag helper to suppress integrity check on the fallback source. Let's save these changes and take a look at the browser. Notice now when we reload the page, 
the bootstrap file from the CDN failed to download because the hash value did not match so the application downloaded the bootstrap file from the fallback source so the minified bootstrap file that we have on our web server that is downloaded to confirm that click on the network tab notice here is the CDN bootstrap file it failed to download that so it has then downloaded the minified bootstrap file from our fallback source now if we set this tag helper suppress fallback integrity to false then the integrity check will be performed even on this bootstrap file downloaded from our fallback source since the hash values are not going to match now the browser will fail to download from both the sources from the CDN as well as the fallback source and as a result our application styles will not work let's prove that reload the page and click on the console tab notice the browser failed to download the bootstrap file both from the CDN source as well as from the fallback source and as a result the application styles are not working we don't need integrity check on the fallback source because it is our own server and we trust it and let's also set this integrity attribute to its correct hash value let's save our changes and take one final look at the browser notice now when we reload the page everything works as expected that's it in this video Thank you for listening.